So, the first hole to make it into my favourites on the back nine is the 11th. It's the shortest par three on the course. I'd really have liked to got the 10th in, you know, a short par four with that's tight, but perhaps it comes in later. Now the 11th green is, is just like a woman. It starts with a narrow waist and then it spreads out into large, voluptuous, rounded. Right, so the first hole to make it onto my favourite list on the back nine is the 11th. It's the shortest par three on the course. There's quite a narrow entrance here with a false front and it is guarded by two very large bunkers. But beyond that, the green is very large, so there's absolutely no excuses for not getting it well at the green. Uh, let's see if I've got any excuses. That was stopped on a dime or um, a silver dollar perhaps. Well, there we go. I say it stopped on a dime or rather a silver dollar. Let's see if I can add to my tally of birdies on this hole. Although I haven't exactly given myself. Zoom. The easiest part on the green. I mean, this is downhill, right to left. I'm just gonna have to hit this with a feather. Bad for an old man, eh? Another one on the birdie tally. What's that take me to? I'm, I was four over, now I'm down to three over with two birds on the round. Right, so which favorite hole is gonna be next? So the next hole to make it onto my uh, favorite holes on the back nine is number 13. When you've stood on the actual competition tee as we are here. You've got a lovely view out here. This is fantastic. Shame about the uh, color of the sky. So even though I'm on the right side of the tee here, let's do a little zoom the other way. This tree on the left is going to be an issue along with these overhanging trees here. So I need to move over a bit from my usual kind of like right hand side of the T spot and as you can see the fairway slopes heavily left to right there's some small trees down the right you just don't want to be down there it's only 292 yards so I'm probably going to hit three wood and it's going to hit into that bank and it will leave me 100 110 in the green is very small but it's in a lovely little bowl so as long as you get it in the bowl, it's going to roll round and get into the middle of the bowl. It's certainly a birdie chance, but it's also a cock-up chance. And that's why I like this hole.
that hasn't gone far into this wind. But I'm in the ideal position, I'm on the flat bit. Just not too sure how far I've got left. I expect I've hit my three wood barely 180 yards there. Let's check, I got 251. Yeah, I bet, I'll bet I've hit my three wood about 130. Oh my word. Not far off, I've hit my three wood 162. Uphill and into the breeze. That's yeah, not too bad. I got 90 left and a slightly awkward lie. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit pitching wedge. The one thing I gotta do is to hit it straight and get it into that bowl. To with this lie like this is there's a tendency to either pull it or block it. Hang on a moment. A little bit skinny, a little bit left. I think it's just on though. So, did a little better than just on. That might actually be one of the easier putts on the hole. Don't think it's gonna be a bird. There's a lot of borrow on this green. Oh, that's really nice because I just bogeyed 12 coming up the hill there. Hit an awful tee shot, an awful second. Third up to the side of the green, chip and put par. I'm oh, sorry, chip and put bogey. And now I've just cancelled that out with a bird. Right, so that's two holes done. My favourite's on the back nine. Woohoo! Now that's a surprise, I'll bet. I've picked number 14 as one of my favourite holes when you consider that hill and to give you some idea the black and white post up there from the mat is only 149 yards but when you get down to ball height and I mean ball height on the mat not ball height the slope on my watch says 165 now I know that that slope, um, I've tested it, it's a little bit out. So I'm going to say that to that marker is playing about 170. Now I can take the driver and I can hit a real high drive, but then it's going too far. It's going beyond the flat shelf in the fairway and it's running hard left, which leaves you one of these wedges with the club in the air. So this is why it's one of my favourites, because it is a conundrum. It's a problem to solve. Now, I've got some gash balls in the bag, because if you hit a good shot, then you can walk along the low road here and go round the hill. If you hit a bad shot, if you hit it a tiny bit thin or off the bottom groove and you drill it into this face, well, then you've got to go up the hill. And if I make a hash of this, then I'm just going to pull a different club and another ball and try again, but it, it, I have to solve this problem before the competitions start. So the awkwardness of this is my, is why it's the favorite hole. But if you get it right, if you get the ball in the right place, you've got a beautiful view of the green. It looks gorgeous and it's easy. The hard part is getting it up quick off that mat. And when you're my age, getting it up quick is a little bit difficult. So, um, I got the driver out. It's too much club, but it's the only thing I think I can get over the top with. I'm going to weaken my left hand. What I normally do is instead of having it that down the right side, I put the thumb on top so it becomes a one knuckle grip. That'll help me cut it, I hope.
So we're up at the post. That's a hell of a long way up there, he says breathlessly. And if we turn round, you will see down here, there's a little puddle because of the, uh, the contours. But there's a flat area just here. Guess where my ball is? It's about nine feet right of the flag. A tiny little draw because the ball was above my feet there. Always got to aim a bit right when the ball's above your feet. Never birdie, perhaps? One of the important things as you go around a golf course is always try and clock where the flags are. There's the flag for 17. And I've been told off for panning too quickly by Urin Doors. There's the 17th tee down there. Here's the 14th. Just so you know, I'm not telling porkies. There's my ball about nine feet right at the flag. Well, I hope it shows up anyway. Ooh. Wow, doesn't it go away when it goes away? I reckon that silver dollars bring me some good luck. And they've tripled in value since I bought them. Not bad, even though I'm not actually interested in its value. Right, that's three holes done. I've got 15, 16, 17, 18 left. So which one do you think is going to be my next favorite hole? I'll let you know when I get on the tee. Right, the last of my favourite holes is number 16. You knew it was going to be 16. You saw how much fun I had driving off here the other day. I mean, it's just lovely. It's downhill, you drive into a hollow, and then you hit wedge or 9-iron. Look at that, I, I, I keep doing that, don't I? You hit wedge or 9-iron up onto the green. What's not, lo not, what is not to like? It's lovely. Now there's something extra on this tee box. You see, I became club captain on the 9th of January and my drive-in, that ceremonial stand on the first tee and drive a golf ball down there to start your captain's year, that ceremonial bit that doesn't really mean anything, I didn't get to do that because it was supposed to be on the 12th of January and the hotel put it back and they put it back and then of course they pissed me off and I left. Absolutely killed it! I don't know what all this fuss is about, Captain's driving. It's a piece of cake, isn't it? I think even I can manage that one. kidding I drove in the hollow just as normal at 90 yards left very awkward down here though and it's raining how nice So that's the four favourite holes done on the front nine and on the back nine here. One more to go. But which one is it? Is it going to be 17, the long par three? Is it going to be 18, the big drop down to the clubhouse? Or will it be a hole that I recorded on the front nine? 
Mmm. I got about 250 yards to the 17th tee. You've got till then to have a guess. Well, the bonus hole is number 17. 200 and 214 yards from this back tee. Tee's very wide, but imagine the greenkeeper puts it over here one day. Two bunkers down the left. There's a big pond down the right. And this hole just says, do you have the balls to play me? Now you can aim over the end of the path there and run the ball. The ball will bounce and then run to the right into the green. But this hole is saying, come on, play me. Stand up to the plate and hit one. Um, fortunately, I'm down there at 185, so it's perhaps not so hard today. Right, I'm stood on the bench at the back of the tee. Just to give you some height so you can see a little bit more of this hole. There's the water and the green. And you, can bear, you can't quite see the lip of the two bunkers down the left. So, do you have the testicular fortitude to play this hole? And that's why it's my, one of my favourites. Because you've got to knuckle down and you've got to play it. When you get here, you can't just walk past and go to the 18th tee. You've got to play this. Let's see if I can play this. Balls intact on the green. So much for uh, every putt turning against the hill. So that's four on the front, four on the back, and a bonus. So that's it, isn't it? Maybe not. I mean, how can you possibly leave number 18 out of your favourites? Now, I'm now level with the white tee, and you are seeing at my head height, short stop that I am. You can see the fairway, but not a lot of it. A bit. Might have hit that too far. I can't see the ball in this light. Nice drive. Right, that's it. No more bonus holes. You've had 10. That's your lot. Cheerio.